How you doing? This is Yaakov here with a beautiful idea. In the mirror of this beautiful idea, may everyone find real peace and be connected to each other and find the truth through that peace. I was reading over the past <clears throat> weekly sections of the Parshiot and uh, Shem gave me this beautiful idea. I'm going to expand on it, connect a few different points. Hope everybody enjoys. Actually, and one, the last point that I'm going to make is uh, based on my friend Yaakov Klein. Of Yaakov Klein, he's uh, such a phenomenal human being and unbelievable, he, unbelievable person as well. And uh, may everybody be blessed and enjoy and realize that wisdom is found everywhere. So, in a, if you take a look at the portion speaking about Noah, about Noah. And during his generation, the last video I made spoke about Noach, one of the one of the chedushim, one of the novel ideas from the the Slonim Rebbe, and uh, he wrote how Noach represents Yira, which is fear and respect, respecting Hashem, and Avram Avinu represents Ahava, and you can't really compare one another because Ahava loving Hashem. After, after you already respect Hashem, loving Hashem, coming to levels of loving Hashem and doing everything out of passion and enjoyment and just expansive expansiveness, is, there's, no, there's no comparison. But we all know how important Yira is, how respecting Hashem and just basic fearing punishment. You know, we don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to, I, I, you know, I minimum want to be, be afraid of, for my life, walking into the street and making sure I don't get run over by a car. There's some basic rules here you have to know in the world, and so, so too in the spiritual world as well, as well. And it's not to scare people away, it's only to, it's only to encourage them and to help them. To be able to, that they should be safe, and be able to then go further in, in the relationship of God. What's up, Eitan? How are you? <laughs> um, so I want to go very far and uh, and speak about this. We find in Noah's time where he was revealing this era, this this fear of Hashem. What could he say to the to his people, to the people in his generation that they were murdering, killing, and and committing adultery and and more? What, what could they see? He say to them, "Listen, you're gonna sin." What's up, Donna? How you? How's it? <laughs> um, what's ever? What's everybody doing here? Like, like the world is gonna, the Hashem is gonna bring a mob, we're gonna destroy the whole world. You guys need to like kind of do a little tshuva, repent a little bit, you know, focus on what you're doing that's angering God because He obviously wants to bring this flood. I mean, wake up and you know, and minimum if He's gonna come with me, minimum come with me on the ark so I can teach you about you know all the things that I know. It's really it was fear based because what what is he supposed to say? Everything is going to be fine, and no, God already promised him he's going to bring a flood. So, um, so that's one aspect, and you and we see in that in that time where everybody's already so separate, divided, they're killing, they're murdering, and and um, sorry, they're murdering, they're stealing, and they're committing adultery, and and the world is that's already div, div, uh, divisions in the world. So a world like that with all this hatred, and with all of this. Dis, uh, disgusting acts God despises that he destroyed that world that world has no place in his in his world in, in existence they couldn't even listen to respect God don't you have to respect God he's gonna you know he's gonna help he wants to help us but we're in, we're, we're completely going against him all the earlier generations um, were, were trying to lead up at least to to minimum at least to have somebody like Noah Noah in the in the world that he could, that he has such respect and, and and he's such a righteous person in the world, but what he had to give to the world during his generation, well, not only wasn't enough, but it was about the generation themselves. They were so divided they couldn't listen. So that era, that fear, that respect, they couldn't hear. But during the time after Avram Avinu was uh, Avraham Avinu in the world. After he was thrown into the Or Kastim, the fire of Kastim, where he showed that he how much he respected God and how anything in this world, he's not going to let phase him. He's not going to let the passions of his heart and the obstacles in his way um, block him away from finding the truth. So we find this unbelievable human being that uh, served God out of love. He was able to find. So uh, he was able to find ways of serving God out of love, even in his generation of idol worship, and 
most likely as well because people were already worshipping something. Even though they were doing foreign worship, they were already worshipping something. They had a certain love, respect towards something. So he, had, he could be able to, to, to um, just take that love, take that respect, and be able to turn it in a different way towards God. Um, and how do we know this? We find in the in the in the uh, after the flood, after the the uh, the the flood came, we have the generation of the dispersion, the generation of the Tower of Babel, where all of humanity gathered together. Finally, they were together, doing something together, and they had this together. This 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 achdus. You only find this achdus only once after uh, uh, this. Uh, you only find this achdus by Am Yisrael by Har Sinai, where it says Ish Echad Echad, one man, one heart. But this achdus, where they actually received the Torah, but this achdus by the Torah of Bavel was was a unity. Achdus is a unity, which is echad, which means one, and achdus means unity. They had this unity that was binding them together to do a, a feat. They wanted to fight God, so to speak. There's a lot of deeper, deeper meanings of what this meant. Um, some literal and some way, way deeper. Okay, but the most important thing is that they wanted to war with God. They wanted to just, you know, cut themselves off from God, with all their unity. So God, if you take a look at the at the at the at this whole scene, you'll see that although in the previous in the previous generation of the flood, you know they were they were destroyed, but they were they were divided and they were they didn't respect one another. In this generation, they had respect for each other. They 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 found a common point. They became one together, a unified per, uh, group, one nation, one one group of people to do a certain feat. So God said, you got the picture of this unity idea, but it's used for the wrong purpose. It's without peace. It's without real peace because shalom, having shalom means bringing God into the picture. When husband and wife have shalom, they make shalom that God rests between them and all they have all these blessings. And same thing with human beings. There's When, when, when workers, co-workers and, and bosses can have peace with one, one another and they come, to, they come to agreements and they can be happy about this peace, they can come to unbelievable... Um, success uh, spiritually and physically so like relationship wise and, and beyond so so we find here also that in the in the generation of dispersion they had unity but God saw that this unity was not used for the right purpose but it still was greater was higher and it was a better lesson and they learned that lesson more than the generation of Noah and they learned about this unity and God said you have unity but it's not for the right purpose. So I'm going to divide you now. Because before they were already divided. So already divided shows that with all their wisdom, with everything, they could never, they could not come to the right conclusion. Because in order to come to the right conclusion, the right conclusions in this world, you need to be able to be one. You, to, have un, to have unity, to be unified with the peoples of the world. And with your family, start, everything starts with your family, with yourself and your family and your friends. And it goes further out and further out. Some you can, some you can help, some you can't. But unified in general to do the best you can, to make shalom, to make peace. So, so we find that that in that generation of the dispersion, God loved this achdus. He loved this unity. He was impressed by the unity, but not what they used it for. So he dispersed them. So he so he spread them out, changed the languages, and see how much the unity. See how real the unity really will be. And so we find, amen, we, we again, we said before, just connecting this point, Abraham Avinu represents Ahava, which is love. And Echa Achdut, which is unity, the root word is Echad, which is one. Echad, unit one, and Ahava, which is love. If you spell it out, Ahava, Aleph, Hey, uh, Bet, Hey, Ahava, you have the gematria of 13, the numerical value of 13, because you have Aleph, which is 1, Bez, which is 2, uh, Bez is 2, which is 1 plus 2 is 3. Then you have, sorry, Aleph, you have 1, Hey, then you have 5, that's 6, 1 plus 5 is 6, then plus 2 is 8, 6 plus 2 is 8, then 8 plus 5, because the last letter is Hey. 8 plus 5 is 13. The same numerical value of Echad, which is 1, which is Aleph, which is 1, 
Chet, letter Chet, which is eight. That's one plus eight is nine. And Dalit, Dalit, the the last letter of Echad is Dalit, which is nine plus four is thirteen. So Echad and Ahava have the same numerical value. And one of the points I want to outline here is one of the main reasons why Avram Avinu, the, the scene was set. Hashem was setting up the scene for Avram Avinu to come into the world was that there was already achdut, an aspect of unity in the world. And once there's unity, Ahava, <coughs> excuse me, um, Ahava is connected to unity. So Ahava and unity are, sorry, Ahava, love and unity and oneness and being one is very is is the same meaning they could affect one another so once the world was set for unity so then hashem says now you you have this unity you have this togetherness you have this aspect of love i'm going to bring this man full of love for me to unify you with the real love with real unity because through love you can you unify something when you love someone you are one with them you are together with them even in your thoughts and your and your and your feelings whether or not you actually in the same place with them when you're in the same place with someone you love you feel that connection like immediately like right there and they could feel it back like very obviously but when you're far away you can still feel that love and unity that's why love and achdut ahava and echad are the same numerical value and on this point we see how avram avinu hashem set the scene up for avram avinu hashem's guiding history it's not just the fact people are failing every but the whole torah is a torah it actually means instruction it doesn't mean a story it's not just a story it's an instruction everything was created for a reason to instruct us so that we know what to do in this life how we know practically what to do things are nice things are good but we still need to know what to do in our life and we need to know that also that Hashem is guiding the world on how in, in, in every stage it's happening, in every stage that's you know that we're going through, whether or not um, things sometimes feel uncomfortable, sometimes things feel better, you know, but we must understand, we must receive all everything and understanding that once we understand that that God is doing both things that are uncomfortable and things that are amazing, we'll understand well what's well what's the whole picture what's the bigger picture is he doing things that are uncomfortable is he doing things that are amazing or or is, is one is one is one individual doing th the things that are bad or the other individual doing things that are good what's happening everything's really at source root from god and we must realize it's all one and he's doing it out of love for us he's 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 helping us he wants to assist us and on this point i want to connect the final point that my friend yaakov klein he he uh he outlined from the safer uh, a beautiful sefer called Kitsu Varananu um, by the by a beautiful righteous person called the Chalban, in uh, who passed away, Zecher uh, Tzadik who passed away here in Eretz Yisrael about four months ago or so, and he started reading a sefer and I, I would share this idea how how Hashem was setting up a scene for this, um, especially this this final these final moments we have here in the world that are coming up. Uh, I mean, I don't mean like uh, God forbid in a bad way. I'm saying these final moments before the final redemption is happening, because the truth is, it's happening right before our eyes, um, slowly, slowly in process, but it's happening. Um, and, it, and sometimes it's happening faster, and sometimes it's it's stalling a little bit, but it's happening. It's moving. It's moving towards the right direction. So we have to believe in that. And we have to see that all the different things that are happening are beautiful. Really, it's all leading towards the love of Hashem. Everybody will recognize that God is one. He's He's everywhere. He's accessible to everyone. And he loves everyone and he cares for everyone. He wants us to respect him because he's only our best uh, looking out for him. He, he understands and he knows all the different things that we went through in this incarnation and in previous reincarnations. Yes, Judaism 100% believes in reincarnation. Maybe not the way um, other people have explained it, but definitely um, we must understand it's based for sure on our characteristics, our character traits and correcting them and being able to accept the uncomfortable things in our life. And also be able to look for the good, the good that Hashem wants to give us in our life as well, and believe that it all belongs to us, all the good things belong to us. And uh, and so here the the beautiful idea connects. The last point connects that this beautiful righteous person Chalban Zatzal, uh, um, may his name be a, ble a blessing, a memory, uh, a memory bring blessing for everybody. Um, he wrote that um, that in the in the deeper aspects of Hasidut and Torah and esoteric thought in, uh, in Judaism, it's taught that 
that uh, if you ask a person what's their chitzoniyut, what's their, what's the, what's outside, what's the, what's your like, what's not in the mask you wear, but more like what's the, uh, what's the outside image that people perceive you as, as maybe you perceive yourself as a little bit. Um, you would say that that's the outer outside of you, how you dress, how you look, you know, um, what shape you, what shape you are. How big your ears are? If you have a beard? If you don't have a beard, you know what you wear. Everything, all the outside, in, the outside image, how it looks from the outside, and the inside, which is called panimiyut. The inside is your thoughts, your feelings, um, the secrets between you and Hashem, only you Hashem know, and uh, you know the really deep aspects of you. So those are that's the normal definition of chitzoniyut, the outside, and panimiyut, which is the inside. The Chalban takes these ideas. And shows them, flips the whole, flips, flips it on itself, <laughs> which is unbelievable. A Chalban, as it's all says, may his name be blessed, says that uh, that he says really, really, since we're all connected, since we're all really at the root, we're all connected. Chitzoniut, our outside, the outside of ourself is really our thoughts and our feelings, and what we think and our secrets between us and God. Or a secret between ourselves and no, no one that no one knows, or, or inside. And what's chitzoniyut? Sorry, that's chitzoniyut. That's the outside. And what's pnimiyut? And what's the inside? If if the thoughts and our feelings, everything, that's the outside. So what's the inside? The inside is where you, and I, and everyone connect. That's the inside of everyone. And how do we understand this? There's a beautiful rabbi, his name is the Hasidic master of Pinchas Mikoritz. A Hasidic master, he said, he asked a question, how can one pray for another to do teshuva, to, do, to repent, to get closer to God? How is that possible? He said, well, since we're all from Adam, we're all from the same soul, and really, if you want to take an even closer look, we're more even closer than that, because we're really all from Noah and his sons, because the, that whole world was destroyed. So we're even closer than Adam, <laughs> okay? So, so... All of us are coming from Noah and his sons, and and we're all we were all one. We we're all considered one under one blanket, coming from Noah and his wife. Okay, so if you take and more specific, also from Adam as well, because since we're all from there as well, and since we're all connected, and we're, it's like a water molecule, water molecules. Since if you go look in a cup of water, you you put a drop of water. That drop of water actually becomes connected to all the drops of water. So even if you pour a little bit in another cup, all the, an aspect of all drops are being poured into the next cup. Since what's included, since what's in, what's what's only part of the whole is consumed by the whole, is part it becomes the whole. So even if I'm only one part of the whole, I'm part of every single aspect of that whole. We're all connected. So the Chalban is saying that. That's the inside aspect of a person. And that's how a person, by the way, the Rav Pinchas Mikort is saying, that's how I and you are able to pray for each other. Because, we were, because we're all in this pot of water together. We're all connected together. Even though I might look like I'm in this side of the world, or you might look like you're on this side of the street, or on this inside of the street, you're walking in front of me, I'm walking behind you. It doesn't matter. Because we're all a part of the same pot of water, and we're all mixed in this water together. We're all coming, originating from the same soul, originally, okay? And therefore, and therefore, we're able to pray for one another. And I'm included in you, and you are included in me, right, writes Pinchas Mikoritz. And that's how you can pray for someone else. That's the real truth. And so the Chalban is going so far and saying, my insides, your insides, is where we, we connect. That's why when you talk to your friend and you feel so, you feel so great. You feel the great. It's the greatest. It's the greatest thing when you connect with your friends and you're laughing and you're just having a great time, and you're not making fun of other people. You're just like enjoying even. Just from that standpoint, you feel like, wow, this is amazing. I had a wonderful night. My friends were amazing. This is awesome. You feel that connection. Yeah, that's where that's your real inside. That connection is your real inside. And sometimes it's too overwhelming, so you have to like separate a little bit. You have to be like. Just to go come down from it and be like, wow, that was amazing. You know, now back to part of my life. But the truth is you, the, your real life is connecting with others. The outside is just you, yourself, and your feelings and everything on your own. The inside is you and your connection with everyone else. Me and my connection with you. 
May everybody feel that connection. May everybody recognize that we really are connected. And that's why we're, everybody's listening to the news and everybody's listening to this. Why? Because we, the truth is that at heart, we're really concerned for another person, even if they're crazy. We're like, how, how could God create this kind of person? Meaning, like, we're saying, like, like why, why are you hurting people? Why are you doing this? You know, why, why is this happening? Why, why are you thinking about these things? Why? Because at the core, you really want the person to want to do good. Why? Because you want to see good in the world. You want to see, everybody wants to see each other, good for each other, at really the heart. Even though the Yitzhahara does his job, we must do ours. We must connect with everybody. We must pray for everyone. We must do kindnesses for everyone. We must learn with everyone. Give out what you can. That's all we're here to do in this world. And enjoy each other's company. May everybody experience this. May everybody enjoy this. Everybody have real love. Develop real love and have real friendships. And uh, bring each other higher and higher and until infinity. And never stop. Have a wonderful day. Have a beautiful Motsi Shabbos. Have a, I hope everybody's having a Shabbos, a beautiful Shabbos that is having Shabbos. Those who are not, who don't keep Shabbos, that's okay. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you recognize that God loves you, that God cares about you, and you are connected with everyone. Okay? And if you want that connection, it exists. Everybody is yearning for them to ask, how are you? With sincerity. Everybody wants that connection. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful night. Enjoy from the Holy Land. Bye-bye.